All right, last time we were together, we talked a little bit about how writing to a file can be a dangerous thing and deal with that. We need to use this try catch block to warn the compiler that we're about to take some dangerous actions. And so we, uh, so we, when we create this scanner and tie it to a file, we need to put that inside a try catch block so that it knows that if the file can't be found, uh, the, the compiler and the Java virtual machine know what to do. In this case, we would decided we were just going to print out a message saying that the file was missing, and then we would shut the program down with some arbitrary error code. Here, if we reach this point here, that means the file was found and everything is good. And what we did last time was we read through the file. This has next line basically allows us to loop through all the lines in the file. And then each time we read a new line, we printed it out to this screen. So what we're going to do today is we're going to show you how to write to a file, which is extremely similar. So let me create a brand new file class called uh, Write Demo. And what this is going to do is it's going to contain a small piece of code we're going to write that's going to be useful for writing to a file. Now, let me just start off by showing you where we are. Uh, here is the directory which contains our BlueJ project. And you can see here that there is a file called input.txt. It's right here. But you can see there is no output.txt currently. And that's what we're going to create inside our program. We're going to create a file called output.txt, and we're going to write to that file. So let's do that. Uh, let's start off by putting a main method in. And then let's also create the file that we intend to write. So I'm going to say file f equals new file. And this time I'm going to call it output.txt. Now we have to import this file class, and that's in the I.O. library. And once again, we're going to need to use something to write to that file. But this time, instead of using a scanner, which reads the file, we're going to use something called a print writer. Okay. So now you see that after I've created the print writer, it's complaining. And you can see here that it's got the same complaint that the scanner had. And so I would like you now to go ahead and put in a little bit of code to fix this so that this error goes away. OK, so there's a possibility it may not be able to find the file. So how are you going to deal with this then? OK, so we're going to do a try catch block. So we're going to do a try and a catch. And once again, uh, just so that this print writer doesn't die inside this block, I'm going to move the print writer declaration to be outside the try catch. And then I'll just initialize it inside the try catch block here. And now I got to put a catch in there. Now you can see that it was complaining about a particular exception called file not found. I'm going to just use a more generic exception that will just catch everything. And now. We're on our way to solving this problem, but let me just put out a message telling the user that the file was not uh, openable. So uh, now, why why might we now before before when we had this scanner, we couldn't find the file. Here, we don't expect the file to be there because we're going to create the file. So why would that? What what might be the issue that we run into? What do you think? What happens to you when you try to write a file and you can't write it? What would be the re one reason why you can't write the file? You may not have permission in the directory to write the file. You may be out of disk space. There could be all kinds of things that go wrong. So by using this general exception, I'm taking care of all those situations. And I'm going to say uh, println uh, cannot create file output txt in the current directory. Okay, so that basically should now it doesn't say why I can't create it because I don't know why I can't create it. The user is going to have to figure that out. And then, so what I'll do, then I'll shut down the program again. Oops, system exit. Okay, so we've taken care of our error handling now and we've created our print writer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write to the print writer. I'm just going to go like this I'm going to go print writer dot println. Hello world, like this. So I'm going to write that line to the print writer. And this next thing I'm going to show you is really important. We when we open a file like this for writing, we have to close it. So I'm going to say pw.close. We must close it at all open files before exiting a program. 
Okay, so there you go. So I've created a file. I've created a print writer object. I've attached the file to the print writer. If for some reason it's unable to create the file, I'm putting on a message to that effect and shutting the program down. And if I get here, then everything has worked okay and I was able to create the file. And then I've, I'm writing to the file. And I could also write more stuff. I can write more stuff to the file. And then I close the file. Once I close the file, it should save it. That's like a save command. So let's compile and run this puppy. And now if we go back to that same directory we were looking at before, you see that there are two files here now. In addition to the input.txt, there's an output.txt file. And in here, you can see we were able to write all that stuff. We wrote the hello world, and then we wrote another line. So that's basically how you create and write to a file. That is something you're going to need in your lab, which is this lab right here. And so you're going to need to create two, or no, you're going to need to create two files. One is called a good file, and one's called a bad file. You're going to read data, and you're going to put the good records in the good file and the bad records in the bad file. I think that's what your lab is uh, meant to do.